My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 53 of the 120 Days to Jam Chemistry with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at inorganic acids. Inorganic acids. Remember, we are still dealing with no metals and their compounds. We can't talk about inorganic acid without knowing what the word inorganic means. In fact, chemistry itself is divided into organic chemistry, chemistry of earth and space, industrial chemistry, and physical chemistry. Physical chemistry generally has to do with inorganic compounds. When you hear organic, it means from natural source. But in chemistry, organic means the compounds that possess the carbon hydrogen bond. This is general definition or explanation of organic compounds. Therefore, inorganic compounds are simply compounds that don't possess this carbon to hydrogen bond. This is just a tip. By the time we start organic chemistry, you have a full definition of what organic is about and everything about organic compounds. I don't want to spoil anything for you right now. Now, we already know what acids are. Let's call inorganic acid the acids that do not contain the carbon to hydrogen bond. As such, John expects you to know these three inorganic acids. The hydrochloric acid. Anytime you see AQ under HCl, it is an acid, not just hydrogen fluoride. But when you see G, it means that is hydrogen fluoride gas. Aqueous means dissolved in water. That simply means to prepare hydrochloric acid, we dissolve HCl gas in water. So, preparation of HCl aqueous or hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride gas in water, as simple as that. Then, John expects you to know HNO3, trial ozonitrate 5 and H2SO4, tetra sulfate acid. These are the hot cake inorganic acid Jam expects you to know. You need to know how they are prepared, their uses, and facts about them. HCl is prepared by dissolving hydrogen chloride in water, and the uses are in qualitative analysis. Under a, a preliminary test and confirmatory test, we said that to test for certain cations and anions, dilute hydrochloric acid can be used. In fact, we use H2SO4 at a point for confirmatory test. All these are qualitative analysis, knowing the compound present, the gases present, and the ions present. By the time you start dealing with volume of acid, stoichiometry, all that are under quantitative analysis. So, know the difference between qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. H2, uh, HCl is used in pickling, that is, removing rust from metals. Hydrochloric acid is used in making dyes, test dyes, glues, and gelatin. How about HNO3? HNO3 or triazonitrate 5 acid is also referred to as aqua fortis. What is aqua fortis and why is it referred to as aqua fortis? This is because it looks like water. Yes, HNO3. And to prepare HNO3, you react KNO3 with H2SO4. That is potassium triazonitrate 5 reacting with tetraoxyzosulfate 6. One of the products is HNO3. 
O3. Or sodium triosonitrate 5 with H2SO4. You'll get HNO3. Another way to prepare HNO3 is Ostwald process. This is industrial preparation of triosonitrate 5 acid. Ostwald process. And the uses are making of aqua regia. Aqua regia are solvents for dissolving gold and platinum. The solvent for dissolving gold and platinum are simply or is referred to as aqua regia. Then it is used in fertilizers, explosive, and dyes. Things you should know about HNO3 is that it is a strong oxidizing agent. And we know that when acid reacts with metals, hydrogen gas will be liberated. However, dilute HNO3 does not liberate hydrogen from metals. You may be asked, which of the following acid does not liberate hydrogen from metals? It is simply dilute HNO3. Why? It does not mean dilute HNO3 is not powerful enough. It is simply because the hydrogen that is produced in the process will immediately be oxidized to water. So it doesn't give space for the hydrogen gas to even exist. Besides that, dilute HNO3 has all other properties of acid. And when it reacts with copper, it forms NO and NO2. H2SO4 H2SO4 is prepared via contact process in the industry and it is prepared via lead chamber process. Lead chamber process is similar to contact process, just that in lead chamber process, nitrogen 4 oxide NO2 is used as catalyst, while in contact process, vanadium oxide is used as catalyst. Contact process will give you 98% H2SO4. But if you need just 65% H2SO4, the best method for you is the lead chamber method. And the uses of H2SO4 are numerous. For example, they are used as electrolytes in lead acid accumulator. Your car batteries use H2SO4 as electrolytes. And what are electrolytes? They are compounds that dissolve when they are in molten state or when they are in solution. The ions present in H2SO4, we have the hydrogen ion, SO4 ion. They are used as drying agents. Drying is simply the removal of water molecules from a substance. And we looked at drying agents in one of the episodes. H2SO4 can be used as dehydrating agent. Dehydration is different from drying. Drying is just the removal of water molecules. Meanwhile, dehydration is the removal of the elements of water, either the hydrogen ion or hydrogen ion in water. If you remove all these ones, you are dehydrating. And dehydration alters the structure of compound or of substances. H2SO4 can be used to remove rust, to manufacture dyes, paint, detergents, drugs, and explosives. Concentrated H2SO4 is hygroscopic. The properties of salts are efflorescence, deliquescent, and hygroscopy. Hygroscopy is the property of salts where when it's exposed to the atmosphere, it absorbs moisture or water vapor. However, it does not dissolve, it does not change to solution. Something like this will be perfect as drying agent. Then since concrete so far is hygroscopic, it can therefore be used as drying agent, which justifies it being a drying agent. Conk H2SO4 is dehydrating. Hot concentrated H2SO4 is an oxidizing agent. And dilute H2SO4 has all the properties of acid. Ladies and gentlemen, what an interesting class. After this, get the Flash Learner Jam app and choose no metals and their compounds. Begin to play with questions. The questions come exactly the way I've been teaching and analyzing. So if you start answering questions, it will be like repeating what I've said. So it's not necessary. You play with questions. If you see anyone you need help, 
chat me up on WhatsApp, Telegram, or any of my social handles. I am Flash Isaac or Flash Tenas. Those are my two names on all social handles. And if you like this video, why not subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when I drop a new video. And for the application, use the YouTube description below, visit flashlearners.com for various versions, or set Flash Learners Jump on your Play Store. That will do the magic. Ladies and gentlemen, nice having you. See ya in the next episode.